In today's video, I'll be demonstrating how quick and easy it is for you to aggregate multiple interfaces on a MicroTik router using a feature known as bonding. On Cisco routers, you would use ether channel bundling to aggregate multiple interfaces and leverage on technologies like LACP or PACP. But here on MicroTik, it is quite easy to aggregate multiple interfaces using interface bonding. So what you have on the screen is a topology involving two MicroTik routers, and I have two data carrying interfaces here between both routers that I'm going to be aggregating. With LACP, which is industry standard, you have the ability to aggregate up to 16 interfaces with it being active at a time. But in this demonstration, I'm going to be doing with just two interfaces. The cloud symbol you see is a feature on the GNS3 that gives me access to the MicroTik router using the Winbox application that is running on the host machine. So without wasting much time, let's jump right in and get this set up. First, I need to configure router one, and then we'll go to router two. So I'm on router one. I had to go in and set the identity to make it easy for me to identify which router I'm logged into. So to set the interface bonding, I'll go to interface. And then under the interface, I'm going to choose bonding. What do I want to add? So I'll look for bonding click on bonding and here you add your slave interfaces these are the interfaces that you want to be members of the bonded interface known as bonded one i could actually give any name here if i want to but i'll just leave it at the default so go to bonding add your interfaces the mode for load balancing traffic across these bonded interfaces you can set it to uh, round robin, which uh, means that packets are going to be forwarded on first come, first serve basis. There are other options here. You can set this to spanning trip mode. You can also set it to active backup. But for this demonstration, we are going with round robin because we are going to be load balancing traffic or packets rather across these two interfaces that will be bonded as a single interface. Click on apply and OK. Then go to IP address and assign an IP address to the bonded interface. Now, at this point, everything should be OK. But there's a trick that I'm going to show you, but I will leave it for later. So I'll go to the second router now, router 2, log right in. Okay, so I have it here. 
So just like we did for router one, I'll go to interfaces, and then go to bonding, then add. You can set any name here if you want to, but I'll leave it at the default. Go to bonding, choose the interfaces I want to become the, choose the interfaces I want to make the members of that bonded interface. Ether 1 and Ether 2. The bonding feature on the MicroTik, I just thought I should throw this in here. The bonding feature uh, leverages the LACP technology, which is Link Aggregation Control Protocol. It's an industry standard protocol that allows you to aggregate up to 16 uh, links. However, only eight of them can be active at any given time. So what it means is that if you have 16 links aggregated and eight are active, if any one fails, it quickly takes one extra link from the uh, backup eight links that you have to add to the ones that you have. So when you do that, it means that at any given time, you're going to have eight links uh, active at any time. So I just thought I should throw that in there. So the mode for load balancing, we'll leave it at the default here. Uh, which is round robin okay this link monitoring feature uh, you know i said there's something i'm leaving for later so we'll come back to this mri is actually known as media independent interface it is a feature of microtech that you use to monitor link status but i will tell you why you shouldn't use it so i'll click on apply and okay now head over to ip address and assign an IP to the interface. You can see that I already have an IP there, but it's not assigned to any interface yet. So I'm going to assign it to this bonding interface. Now we have this up. The next thing I should do is to configure static RAD, but I've already done that. So we'll just go ahead and carry out the testing on this bonded interface. So I'll go to PC1. I already have an IP assigned to PC1. I also have an IP assigned to PC2. 192.168.100.0/24, and I have 192.168.200.0/24. So both IPs are assigned .2 from their respective subnets. So we we'll head over to PC1 to test to PC2. So here at PC1. So just confirm the IP that we have here. It is 192.168.100.2/24, and the gateway is 100.1. So I'll be testing to the remote PC of 192.168.200.2, and I'm going to make it continuous. So right now we are able to get to PC2, and the traffic should be flowing through. Uh, the bonded interface, as you can see here. But if you check the individual interfaces, you'll see that traffic is being load balanced across this individual interface. You can see that we have packets flowing through Ether 1 and Ether 2. Okay? And now, this is where it gets interesting. I'm on PC1, so I'm going to head over, or rather, I will stay at Router 1, and I'm going to disable one of the bonded interfaces so that we can see what the experience is will be like so i'll try to adjust the screen so that we can see what's happening in real time so right here on router one i'm going to shut down ether one let's see the experience on pc one so right now you can see that we are losing packets we are losing packets on PC1. So you can see that the link has become erratic. So if you go to the bonded interface, you can see that the link monitoring filtering feature I'm using here is the media independent interface. So what this does, or the micro tick, is that it allows you to monitor the speed and the duplex. This feature on a microtech router only monitors 
the local interface. It's only monitoring the status of the local interface. It has no way of detecting what is happening on router two. And also router two has no way of knowing that the ETA one interface on router one is correctly done. If we look at ETA one on router two, we will see that router two is still forwarding some packets out of ETA one. And that's the reason for the packet drops that we are seeing at the moment. If I should shut down ETA one, like I just did now, you will see that the link becomes stable. In a typical enterprise setup, you will most likely have your ISP sitting in the middle here. So what it means is that if the interface or if the link between router one and the ISP goes down, router two has no way of knowing that if you're using media independent interface feature on the micro -tick. So that means that router two will continue to forward packet out of that interface to router one and then you will experience the kind of failure that we are experiencing. So to guard against this, everything I've just explained here, we need to change the uh, link monitoring feature that we have here. We need to change it from media independent interface to ARP, and then we specify the IP address on the remote device that we are monitoring to. That way, should that interface go down at any time, the system at the remote location will detect that the interface is down and stops the forwarding of traffic through that interface. So let's get that done. Before we can change this, we will need to specify the monitoring IP. So right here, I'm on router one. I'm going to go to the command line, open the terminal window and specify the uh, monitoring protocol as well as the uh, monitoring target IP. So you go to interface bonding and set the link monitoring protocol to ARP and then the ARP uh, target IP. And I'll set it to, since I'm on router one, I'm going to set it to the IP address on router two, which is 192.168.10.2. Hit the enter key. Now that I have this done, I can come back here and you see that the link monitoring has changed, okay, from media independent interface to ARP, okay? So I'm going to go to router two and do the same thing. Here is router two. head over to the command line, and then enter the same command, interface bonding, okay? Set link monitoring to ARP, and then the ARP uh, target IP, and I'll set it to the IP address on router one, on night two dot one six eight dot ten dot one. Now hit the enter key. Once I do that, I'll come back here and confirm that this has changed to ARP, okay? So you remember that on router two, I had to shut down the interface to stabilize the link. So I'm going to enable the interfaces now on both of them. So I need to have this adjusted a bit so that we can see what is happening in real time. Okay, right now the link appears to be stable. So I'm going to go over to router one's uh, ETA one interface and shut it down. So here we go. Now you see that unlike before, when we had the protocol for monitoring on MII, we did not notice any packet drops. The link detected from router two's perspective that an interface on router one has been shut down. And immediately it stops the forwarding of traffic out of that interface, making the link stable, okay? So if I should re-enable it, we will still not notice anything. So this is how you set up interface bonding and leverage on uh, a monitoring feature known as the ARP. That brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to subscribe, like, 
share and turn up the post notification see you in my next video